This is gonna suck. I've been making videos on YouTube for about 12 years and it's difficult to remember all the videos that you've made on YouTube over that time. Recently, the Colorado Avalanche traded Tyson Berry to the Toronto Maple Leafs and I'm like, hey, I cheer for them. And then I remembered, wait a second, I've interviewed Tyson Berry. 10 years ago. And that video is actually up on YouTube, but no one's seen it. I uploaded this video June 25th, 2009, so it's over a decade old. It's only got about 3,000 views, and almost all of them were years and years ago. It's not like anyone was searching for 10-year-old interviews between me and Tyson Berry. Here's the thing. When you do something for a while, hopefully you get better at it. I like to think I'm okay at making videos now. I like to think I'm, I'm decent at interviews. 10 years ago, mm, no. So... I'm gonna watch that video for the first time in many, many years and record myself as I react to all of its cringy, cringy glory. This is gonna be awful. Let's go. Welcome back. Welcome back. Oh yeah, a little bit of context here. I went to Ryerson University for radio and television arts, but I was a commuter student, so going downtown all the time was a pain. Justin Fisher, you might know him from Hockey Twitter. He's a uh, interesting character. We had a campus radio show together on U of T Scarborough's campus. If you've read my book, you already know this, but I used to write for a junior hockey radio show hosted by Gino Retta. So after that show was done for the year, I was bored out of my mind. So Fisher and I came up with the idea of, hey, let's invite a bunch of the people I have phone numbers for for onto our campus radio show. We'll record them, doesn't matter if anyone listens to it live, and then we'll upload it on YouTube. My friend Joseph De Benedictus, he's the one in the plaid shirt, he agreed to join me for the show as well. All right, let's 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 do this. Welcome back to the special edition of, uh, I guess we're going to call it the Steve Dangle exclusives rather than the Dangle Den. It's a bit of a silly name, I think. Ah! We're seven seconds into a five and a half minute video. God! What the hell is this voice? We're not going to call it the Dangle Den. I never called anything the Dangle Den. This is horrible. Everything from the jump is horrible. I was trying so hard to make it with everything. Like, I would call something a Dangle exclusive today as a joke. Like, not seriously. Dangle exclusive. Oh, you're not going to get this anywhere else. It's, it's only on this campus radio station that you can listen to a Kelowna Rockets defenseman. What did I think was going to happen with this video? Tyson Berry is on the phone while I make this terrible introduction. We're going to call it the Steve Dangle exclusives rather than the Dangle Den. It's a bit of a silly name, I think. But uh, <laughs> Joe, Justin, we have our first guest of the day on. We have, uh, he's a defenseman in the Western Hockey League. Uh, and he's draft eligible this year. Predicted to go in the second or third round. Bit of a wild card. We're not 100% sure where he's going. We don't know 100% where he's going. That's how the draft works! Also, it's the first guess that you didn't even reintroduce your co-host. You stink! Justin who? Joe who? Uh, from the Kelowna Rockets, we have Tyson Berry. Tyson, what's up, man? Uh, not too much. Just finished a workout. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what were you doing? You sound like you're out of breath. Uh... Oh! The worst part is I actually remember this. I remember calling Tyson Berry, patching him through, and he was out of breath. He's like sucking wind because he's getting ready to get drafted and he's doing like wind sprints and things. The smart thing to do would have been to give him like five minutes or something to catch his breath and then call it. But no, I got a caller on who's like this. Tyson, if you're watching, I'm so sorry. Don't watch, God. Uh, I don't know, just some sprints and stuff. Uh... No, good to go now, though. <laughs> good. Well, I'll give you a second to catch your breath. Um, you know, I, I, how are you stuttering on the first question? It's the first one. The questions are in front of you. Oh, well, it's okay. I'll give you a second to catch your breath. Immediately followed by question. Uh, uh, how are you feeling? Not after the workout, but <laughs> how are you feeling uh, leading up to the uh, NHL entry draft? Um, are you are you kind of counting down the hours because it's literally hours away, or are you just kind of you know acting cool about the whole thing? Well, I think I'm trying to act cool about the whole thing. I don't know how that's going for me, but... Uh... <laughs> Ah, did you catch that, that little thing? <laughs> <laughs> I laughed into the microphone on purpose. Everyone must hear my laugh, not his question. Uh, <laughs> let your guests talk. Nice live strong bracelet, bud. Goes really well with that shirt that was like one of three that I owned. I don't know, I guess I'm getting a little anxious, uh, excited, excited, nervous, you know, all those things. I mean, I've worked my whole life for this, and, you know, now it's almost here, so <laughs> just uh, excited to get it going. Wow. Well, it sounds like you just got out of a pretty intense workout. If you say the word workout again, I'm going to punch you. And, uh, you know, speaking of intense workouts, the NHL Draft Combine was a couple weeks ago. Um, and I wonder, was it difficult to participate in all those, you know, festivities and events and tests, you know, just days after going through a huge WHL playoff run and then, uh, you know, kind of suffering a, a devastating defeat in the Memorial Cup final? Uh, 
Okay, you have a guest on, or you, you meet someone for the first time, well, what do you do? Try to be warm, maybe funny, you know, make them feel welcome, right? Second question, oh, you're devastating Memorial Cup loss. That's great, Steve, he knows. He's still out of breath, if you hadn't noticed. Uh, I think, it, yeah, it was a little tougher for me. Uh, you know, some of those guys there have been working out for two months already, so for me going in, uh, I was lucky enough that I was still uh, in fairly good shape from the season, so... I think the bike rides went okay, but the strength stuff was a little, little bit different. I hadn't worked out in a while, and uh, like you said, the loss there in the finals was a bit devastating. I didn't. It's probably the last place I wanted to be, but uh, you know, I'm glad it's over with. It's something you got to do, and uh, I think it went pretty well. Well, and it wasn't all bad news in the playoffs. Obviously, um, you know, despite the Memorial Cup loss, you're still the WHL champion, uh, champions, and I know. A lot of people lost money on that final. Is betting on WHL games a thing? Because uh, the Calgary Hitmen going into the final, nothing against the Rockets, certainly, but uh, the Hitmen were just a juggernaut. They went into the finals undefeated, and I wonder, were, were even you guys, the Rockets, kind of uh, surprised at uh, just how you handled the Calgary Hitmen in the final to win the championship? Uh, I think... I think maybe a little bit. I mean, after we uh, beat Vancouver there, we knew that uh, anything could happen in the finals, and we knew uh, the team, and they'd had, uh, you know, <laughs> lots of success up to that point, sweeping their last three uh, opponents. But, uh, you know, we came out and played our game, and we two in their building. Oh, that is a horrifying moment when you're doing live radio and the phone cuts for a sec. That little look up was, Justin, what the hell is going on? By the way, there's two other guys in the room. Why didn't they ask any questions? That little false, mm, yeah, that bravado nod like I wasn't completely crapping my pants. You no, know, we came out and played our game and we two in their building and uh, it went, uh, what just went from there. We're in conversation with Tyson Berry of the Kelowna Rockets. In conversation with. I was an intern at the Fan 590, a sports radio station at the time, and I was just doing an impression of all the on-air people. Um, for those of you uh, listening that don't know, Tyson is actually the son of Len Berry, uh, co-owner co -owner, sorry, of the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning in the NHL. And I know a couple months back, you actually asked him not to draft you. Um, I wonder, uh, has that position changed at all and can you maybe take our listeners through uh why you made that request can you tell our listeners there were like 14 people listening <laughs> but this question actually wasn't bad continue uh no i don't think it's changed i think that uh the reason for that being is uh you know i just i just want to you know my dad's been there to help me the whole way he's been my biggest supporter but now it's kind of the time where i want to if i'm going to make it to the nhl one day i want to do it on my own first uh before i have anything to do with him again and uh you know what, uh, it's a business for them too, and he tells me if I'm the best player available at the time, you know, and then it's a business, but I've asked <laughs> him not to, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, and Well, and speaking of your dad, he was uh, a pick in the sixth round, uh, 124th overall in the 1988 draft, picked by yeah. the Edmonton Oilers. Um, yeah. I wonder, are there any bragging rights if you go earlier than he did? <laughs> I don't know about Oh, the question sucks. God bless Joseph, man. That little laugh gassing me up. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, I guess I could rub <laughs> it in his face a little bit. I mean, I'm sure he'd do the same, so yeah, why not? The interview's like three quarters done, and he's still catching his breath. Well, and, and you know, leading up to the NHL uh, entry draft, we, we've talked to a defenseman who uh, gets criticized about his, his size as a, as a hole in his game, and certainly I've seen things that list you as 5'9", I've seen things that list you as 5'10". As a defenseman, even in the WHL, which is which is you know a rough and tumble league, but heading into the NHL, what would you say to someone that says, "Well, Tyson Berry's size may be an issue going forward"? I think you know what I think that I wouldn't have to say much because I think that the way the game's played now, I mean, you see defensemen coming up all over the place that are smaller and they can move the puck and they can skate and they make up for their lack of size and you know they're smart and you can't. You can't hook and hold and overpower people anymore. It's about containment now and skating, so I think that plays a huge part in it. I mean, I don't see size as a factor anymore. You see, Tyson Berry knew where the league was going 10 years ago, man. 484 NHL games to his name and 307 points. Remember, he's a defender. Scored a career-high 59 points last season, 57 the season before that. I guess you could say he knows what he's doing. Also, Joseph's flipping through papers and he didn't have any questions, so I'd love to know what he was reading. Well, Tyson, I hope uh, you keep cool in the days leading up to the NHL entry draft, and certainly you deserve a rest after the uh, workout you did, like, what, 30 seconds before this interview? <laughs> yeah. But, uh... Yeah. 
<laughs> Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem, and uh, best of luck on the on the twenty sixth. Okay, thank you. Oh, here we go. We got end credits. Host Steve Dangle Glynn says host should say schmuck. Co-host and editor Joseph De Benedictus. Honestly, this was like a two-hour broadcast because we had guest after guest after guest. I, I don't know if Joseph spoke. You know what? That was his camera we were using. So it was basically, hey Joseph, can you come so we can use your camera and make sure it works? And I had to get him to edit it because the, the little bar at the bottom and Tyson Berry's picture and even this thing at the end uh, saying what we all did. I was using Windows Movie Maker to edit all my videos, and Joseph, I want to say, had like Adobe Premiere or something like that. So, so far, it should say Steve Dangle Glenn, guy who says words, Joseph De Benedictus, guy who owns all the equipment and does everything of value, and then technical director, Justin Fisher, guy who works the phones and makes sure that the microphones are on. I'm sure you want to, where are they now? Justin Fisher is a very sweet boy on HockeyTwitter.com. He's very nice and is thinking about starting a blog. Joseph De Benedictus actually works for the Buffalo Sabres. Actually, not just the Buffalo Sabres, he works for the Buffalo Sabres, the Buffalo Bills, all of them. He uh, works on a lot of their media, does a lot of editing. If uh, you're a Sabres fan and you've watched the Behind Blue and Gold series that he does, the behind the scenes of the Buffalo Sabres, yeah, Joe's behind all that. He also edits together the videos that go on the Jumbotron at Sabres games, and he's even narrated a few of them, like the, uh, like the safety videos, like, hey, don't strangle the person sitting next to you, and stuff like that. As for me, I wrote a book and I'm being annoying about it and Tyson Berry was selected in the third round 64th overall in the 2009 NHL entry draft by the Colorado Avalanche he's played nearly 500 games and he is now a Toronto Maple Leaf so we made it through the video that was rough I didn't like it but but it was good to you know look back and say wow that was bad I think when you look back on your old stuff there should be at least an element of wow that was bad or at very least wow I could do that better now that wasn't the only horrible interview I did that day it wasn't the only horrible interview I did that year or ever posted on YouTube so maybe I could do more of these videos what do you think leave some feedback down below so that is it for this one thank you very much for watching click like if you like this video click subscribe if you really liked it tell all your friends that this has been a Steve Dangle exclusive. <sighs>